progressiveness. You know? They call it progressiveness. They're walking around with all their rainbows on, which is sad because you should be able to rip to wear a rainbow colored anything and not be associated with uh, alphabet lifestyle because a rainbow is actually a, a, a beautiful gift from on high that Yahweh gave us to uh, to remind us that he would never destroy the earth with, with, with uh, water again with the flood you know the Lord promised us but they took this, this beautiful thing and if you've seen a rainbow in the sky man it, 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 is, a, it is a sight to behold right but uh, they take this beautiful thing and they turn it into something that had absolutely nothing to do with it. And then they're pride about it. And, you know, call it pride. When the Lord, one thing that he hates is, is pride. So a lot of people are going to get visited from, from on high uh, with great violence from, from who they call God and Jesus. All right, uh, verse 13. There is a generation. All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises on our glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone, peace of salutations to the hopeful elect. And I was the beloved Elder Malcolm from the branch of GMS Chicago speaking. All right. And, you know, he made a lot of valid points in speaking to of the fact that you can't even wear, you know, rainbow colors or even a rainbow colors all together without someone associating you with this madness that E has pushed out here on our earth that if you do wear these colors that it's a, it is a sign of you being a part of a particular alphabet community okay you should already know who I'm speaking on alright but these things should not be alright these things should not be so I want to get this scripture. Let's go to the book of. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. Chapter five, <clears throat> verse 20. Woe unto them that call evil good and, and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter okay so when you go into this word whoa let's just go into it let's click on it doesn't really give you that much information on this one surprisingly in this definition but when you go into this word where whoa goes into you know sorrow destruction calamity all right so it's saying woe unto them that call evil good and good evil and see this is what you have been done in the, in the earth today you have people calling things that were you know once i mean still is right so you got things that are people are calling that is good evil and evil you got things that are that people are calling uh, it's like yeah, someone distracting me. Yeah, people people calling things that are evil good and things that are good evil. Okay, and these things should not be. All right. So when you think about, you know, you know, two of the same, you know, two of the same kinds committing acts together, they call these things they call these things good, which these things are evil, right? But then here it is, you, you have a man saying he wants to have more than one woman, right? But they call that evil. Well, we're speaking of women that are not married or betrothed. We, we, we're speaking of a, a woman that's not married or betrothed to men already, okay? Meaning they would be virgins. But the world deems that as evil. But they're okay with two of the same kind, you know, being together you see what i'm saying so see these are just examples of what the scriptures are speaking on okay let's go into let's go into the you know the, the food market you know talk about food the, the, the lord gave us a law on what and not to eat and this is going 
And to, this is speaking, it was speaking to the Israelites, so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Okay? So when people talk about culture, talk about heritage, you know, the way of life, the scriptures is your way of life and what you're, which you're supposed to follow. Matter of fact, let's go to the book of, uh, before we continue on. I believe it's Second Timothy three and sixteen. It says all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So you want to be instructed in the right way. You want to be you consider you want to consider yourselves, or you want to say you know you want to try to live in a righteous way. Well, you got to go back to the Holy Scriptures. You got to go back to the standard which was set forth. Which you people constantly, you know, ignore. Which you constantly throw away. All right, because E has thrown it away. Because E, you know, doesn't, you know, uh, validate it as to be, you know, the law of the land. So you, you you throw it away. Okay, and you validate his practices and his customs and his uh, unrighteous decrees, his laws, to be, you know, the standard. But look at the look at the state of the earth. Un, under his rule, under his guidelines, look at the state of the earth, though. He has done a great job, hasn't he? But uh, you know, so so as I was making an example of dealing with you know clean and unclean food, okay, things we are not supposed to eat, and things that we are we are able to eat. All right, here it is that what the Bible tells you not to eat and cause it unclean, E tells you these things are clean and it's okay for you to eat. But then you wonder why us as the people, first of all, our diet is already messed up, but you eat the unhealthiest foods. Not to mention we already have the worst, we get the worst of the worst in our grocery stores. Okay. On top of it, we get the worst of the worst. You don't even choose the best of the worst. You continue to still eat the worst. On top of fast food. Okay. On top of not putting no greens in your diet. You know, on top of you drinking pop and Kool-Aid all day. You know. So this is why we lead in what? In, in all the, you know, statistics of, you know, when it comes to our health. Uh, uh, gout. You know, uh high blood pre pressure things of that sort okay which you know not to mention these you, a lot of the other races are falling right behind you know the leading pack israel okay but still jake you wouldn't be in this you wouldn't be in this condition as bad if you follow the laws if you follow the laws that the commandments which is your wisdom inside the nations so let's get um Leave us in Leviticus. And it's not this one. Let's try a book of Ezekiel. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. See if I can find it in here. Ezekiel chapter 44. Yep, verse 23 says, And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. All right, so this was the job of the priesthood. All right, now we as being men of the Lord's servants, the prophets, okay, we have been, we're being turned back and being made, scripture say, to what? Kings and priests. Right, as the scripture says, we're being made back to kings and priests. Right, and what was the priest's, priest's job? Was to teach the difference between the holy and profane. And this is what we are teaching our people. Okay, to repent, return back into Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, quit your rebellion. You see, do the things that are pleasing unto Him instead of delighting in the things that is not pleasing to Him. Right. Push forth, give an effort, try. But Jake don't even want to do that. Because Jake is rebellious. Jake is rebellious. 
Okay? So let's read that again. Verse 23, it says, Ezekiel chapter 44, verse 23, And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. In the controversy, they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my judgments. Right? And so that's how we, we make our assessments, and we judge by the holy scriptures. That's how we judge. When the scripture says judge righteously, that's how you're supposed to judge behind a righteous standard, which is the holy scriptures. Not off, about, not, uh, off of our feelings. Right? It says... And they shall keep my laws and statutes in all my assemblies, and they shall hollow my Sabbaths. So now that, can lead, that leads me to the book of Leviticus. Chapter 19, verse 15. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shall thou judge thy neighbor. Okay, and you all you got to go back to the scriptures because this is the standard. You can't operate on feelings. You can't put your your, your emotions behind this. Okay, that's why it says, you know, thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, because when you start to put your, your, your you know, you know your your mind in, involved in this, instead of letting the scriptures weigh everything out, okay, that's when things can get you know out of control. That's why you got to go back to what the standard is. It's not about what we believe and how, what we think, what we feel. No, you have to go back to the scriptures. Okay? But the point being is being made that, you know, this devil has turned everything upside down. Okay? And we, through the, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemesha, we are setting the record straight. Okay? All through the spirit. But guys, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 16, it says, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay for the work. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing, thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? Okay. And it's the, the pride of these people. You know, have, they have this mindset of, I can do whatever the hell, hell I want, you know? I can do whatever the hell I want to do, okay? And the Lord has no control over me and my doings. We'll see about that, okay? But he have turned everything upside down. As I started the lesson off, it went into, you know, how, like Adam Makama said, you know, just by trying to wear these the, the beautiful, you know, colors of the rainbow, you will now be associated with these people and their practices, Okay, behind some he came up with by trying to use something that had you know that was, that was beautiful and that the Lord won't flood the earth anymore to 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 be a symbol of His uh, uh, madness that He have created. So I just wanted to touch into the spirit. Lord willing, hope it was edifying. Till next time, I want to say, Shalom.